So, last time we talked about uh, Newton's first law, second law, third law, which forms the basis of what we call Newtonian mechanics and uh, I stated Newton's first law and talked about it in the sense that it defines a class of uh, frames of references which we call inertial frames of reference. So, first law is uh, basically related to identification of inertial frames of reference. If uh, you have a reference frame, you have x, y, z axis given, you have clock given to measure time and uh, then you do dynamics of the particle here and there and look at the forces and look at the motion of the particle. You will find if you have chosen inertial frame, then you will find that yes, if I do not apply any force or the net resultant force on a particle is 0, then the particle remains unaccelerated. If it is at rest, it remains at rest. If it is moving, it keeps moving with uniform velocity. So, these things uh, we know from our schools, but uh, the proper interpretation of Newton's law in this particular fashion, it is, uh, is sometimes uh, not done at a lower level. And once the inertial frame is defined, then comes Newton's second law that in such frames, if you do apply a force what happens and that tells that yes, an acceleration will be produced, this is up to say first law, but then uh, it is proportional to the acceleration or it is product of mass and acceleration or it is proportional to mass into acceleration and the proportional the constant is taken as 1, we define units of force in that particular fashion. So, those things come after we have defined that inertial frame from the first law. And then the third law is that action reaction which is really very, very difficult to practice, but then if you, if you think in terms of forces not force, forces because uh, you have two objects, one applies force on the second and the second also applies force on the first, they are equal and opposite that is the weak form of Newton's third law and then they are also along the line joining that we call strong form of the Newton's third law. So, first uh, let me talk of particle dynamics that means I have just one particle and then uh, there are forces on it externally we are applying forces. So, dynamics of a particle. When I call particle, <laughs> which particle or how big is the particle? We do not generally we will not talk in terms of uh, atomic or subatomic particles. Generally, we will be talking of uh, bigger particles say at least micrometer type or millimeter type or centimeter type or meter type or kilometer type planets. So, those things we can do, but the particles means that now I am not interested in the inner structure of that particle. For me, it is just one point, right. So, that is how we define our particle. It may be an extended body. But uh, if all parts of the extended body move with the same velocity at particular instant, as time passes the velocity can change, the whole thing can be treated as a particle. So, it is not only just size, it is basically this that if I am not interested in the internal structure, parts, how parts are moving or what parts are doing, I am not interested in that, then uh, the whole thing can be treated as a particle. But you conceive this idea, you have a small particle and then we are doing dynamics of that. So, the basic equation is very simple, a force is equal to m a and the stated problem of uh, dynamics is that at a certain time, you know the position of the particle, you know the velocity of the particle and then uh, as time passes, you know at each instant what is the force on the particle and then you have to predict that at a given later time where the particle will be and what will be its velocity. So, that is the problem. So, what is the problem? What is known at certain time which we call t equal to 0. Remember 
time has been flowing from uh, time immortal and will keep flowing. So, if you uh, say t equal to 0, you have chosen some instant and you are calling it t equal to 0. So, it is our definition of t equal to 0. Right? So, in some questions if you get to negative value of t that does not mean that it is unacceptable, it is unphysical. It's it's before that instant which you call t equal to 0. Before that also the motion was there, the particle was there, the forces were there and everything was there. So, if you are getting in some uh, question you solve it and you get t as negative, that does not mean that uh, it is unphysical. It only tells that you have taken a particular instant as t equal to 0 and this result pertains to time before that. Okay. Nevertheless, at some instant which we call t equal to 0, position and velocity of the particle is known. That is one thing and then the force acting on the particle. is also known. The force may be same at uh, all later instants or force may depend on where the particle is. If the particle has reached from here to there, the force is different. If it has gone somewhere else, the force is different. So, force may be depending on the position of the particle force may be depending on the velocity of the particle. If you throw something with a high speed in air, the force by the air on that object we, we generally call it a resistance, air resistance depends on the velocity or the magnetic force you know depends on the velocity. Force may depend on the velocity, force may depend on time. So, whatever, but it is known, it is known. So, in that entire duration it is known. So, this is known and what we wish to find the position and velocity at all later times to find and this is known. So, that is basically the task of uh, mechanics at least when we do this particle dynamics and the thing is very very simple you have f is equal to mass times acceleration. Remember mass time acceleration is not the force it is product of two quantities mass of the particle and acceleration of the particle. This is equal to the force applied. F is equal to m a. So, this is force, this is not force. It has units of force, it has dimensions of force, but this is not force, this is product of mass and acceleration. Okay. So, you can, and this is known, this is known. So, you have uh, acceleration is f by m, mass of the particle is supposedly known. So, you write this as second derivative of position vector d 2 r d t square that is equal to f by m. If you write in the component forms Cartesian component forms you have three equations d 2 x d t square is equal to f x by m then d 2 y d t square is f y by m and d 2 z d t square is equal to f z by m. You can also use other types of coordinate system other than Cartesian then the equations will be different, but you will have three equations. So, this vector equation is a combination of three equations and each of this f x f y f z can be function of space point or function of time 
or both. So, this uh, may be fun some function of x y z, some function of x y z, some function of x y z can also be time, but we will first uh, deal with uh, the forces which depend on the position of the particle. Just like if you have a pendulum, then uh, whatever time if the if the pendulum is here you have a particular force, your pendulum is here you have a particular force, pendulum is here you have particular force. So, it depends on the space position and uh, position of the particle and therefore, it can be a function of x y z, it can be a function of x y z, this can be a function of x y z. If it so happens that it does not depend on x y z or t, it is constant or in entire during the entire motion of the particle we are interested in this force is constant. Then the life is very very simple d 2 x d t square is equal to a known function f x by m this is constant right. We start with constant force. So, this f x by m is constant. So, that is this and then you can always integrate it d x d t is equal to this is uh, one integration. So, f into t and plus some constant c 1 and then again integrated x is equal to half f t square and plus c 1 t and plus c t and this is the acceleration which is constant which is known because it is f divided by m. So, if you write it as a x this f x by m if you write it a x your x is equal to half a t square plus c 1 t plus c 2 and these two constants are not known as such with this much of information. So, what you need is at t equal to 0 that means, at some instant I know the position and I know the velocity and I am calling that as t equal to 0. So, what is known as x at time t equal to 0 that is known. I can call this position as x equal to 0. Okay. So, that is a standard uh, way if you say that this position I have chosen to be the origin. So, here x is equal to 0, y equal to 0 and z is equal to 0. Just as you can choose a particular instant as t equal to 0, you can choose a particular space point as the origin x equal to 0, y equal to 0 z is equal to 0. So, if you have chosen this particular position at t equal to 0 to be 0, you can put it here. What do you get? 0 is equal to t is equal to 0. So, this is 0, this is 0, c 2. So, c 2 is 0. So, you have x is equal to half a t square and plus c 1 t. So, you get the value of one constant, but one constant still remains and one information still remains because not only position I also know the velocity and velocity is here velocity is here d x d t. So, at t equal to 0 if the velocity is known and if I call that velocity as u small u then what I get if I use this this is my v x. So, if uh, I use this information that at t equal to 0 at t equal to 0 the velocity or the x component of velocity at t equal to 0 is is known and I call it I call it u x. Then I can use this equation u x is equal to and put t equal to 0 u x is equal to c 1. So, if I put it here this gives me u x is equal to c 1. So, the c 1 is that uh, x component of the velocity at t equal to 0 and you put it here and you get your uh, very well known equation x is u x t plus half a x t square and same is the story for y and z components. So, u y t plus half a y t square and z is equal to u z t and plus half a z t square. So, if you know the force and force happens to be same at all positions at all time. So, this is constant this is a x this is a y and this is a z and they are all known 
then you can immediately write what is x y z at a later time t and from here you can write what is what is uh, so v x is equal to c 1 is u x and this is a x. So, all those equations uh, that you learned in the first chapter of uh, of your high school book in mechanics. So, all those things uh, can be found from here. So, in principle the task is over right if, if it is constant. If it is not constant then there are techniques. If uh, you have this kind of equation, but then this depends on x or it depends on y, it depends on z or it depends on time, then you have techniques of uh, integrations and from there you will re-derive the corresponding equations which will depend on how, how this f x, f y, f z are depending on x, y, z or time. So, those uh, methods can be applied finally, you can get x y z finally, you can get v x v y v z. So, v x is this v y is this and v z is this. Right? But we will be talking more about some parameters which are associated like linear momentum angular momentum, energy which will be useful for our system of particles, which will be useful for uh, rigid bodies and which will also be useful in many cases for a single particle. So, let me talk about those quantities or those physical quantities. So, one very important parameter in uh, Newtonian mechanics is linear momentum of the system you are studying. It may be a single particle or a system of particles, rigid body whatever linear momentum, linear momentum. To start with I will be talking of a particle of a particle single particle. I am talking of single particle system. So, linear momentum and we define linear momentum as p is equal to mass times velocity no fantasy nothing special this quantity is defined as linear momentum it is by definition this is the definition this quantity is called linear momentum mass of the particle into velocity of the particle is called linear momentum of the particle and then Newton's law force on the particle is equal to mass of the particle into acceleration. So, this uh, we can uh, recast in terms of this if I take d p d t or from here also I can go let us go from here. This is m into d v d t rate of change of velocity is acceleration again by definition right. This is no physics uh, involved here we define this rate of change of velocity as acceleration. So, it is this if mass is constant I can take it inside. So, it is d d t of m v and m v is p. So, it is d p d t. So, force on a particle is equal to rate of change of momentum of the particle. Actually, Newton described second law in terms of rate of change of momentum only. The words used were in principia were very different, but essentially the force and this rate of change of momentum they are proportional that is how Newton's uh, started and then from here we uh, we go to this f equal to m a. So, this is uh, about uh, force and p and if this force is 0 force on the particle is 0 d p d t is 0 right d p d t is 0 and that means p is constant linear momentum is constant obvious nothing to be derived mathematically obvious a force is 0 there is no acceleration if there is no acceleration there is no change in velocity and if there is no change in velocity and mass is anyway in Newtonian mechanics we take the mass of the particle as constant no change in p. So, p is constant. So, if a force is 0 then uh, linear momentum is constant and we will see that when we talk when we talk about uh, system of particles 
or uh, extended bodies which can rotate and other things. We will see that uh, this translates to a very important law of physics which is called conservation of linear momentum. If the total external force on a system is 0, then the linear momentum of the entire system that remains constant is, is different from this. So far, I am not talking of external internal forces, it is one particle and I am ab absolutely not interested in what is going inside. So, any force on this is external. Okay? So, that is why I am not talking of any that word external force so far, but once you go to a system of particles where different parts of the system can exert forces on each other, then those forces are called internal forces and any force which is coming from uh, something uh, other than this system that will be external force and conservation of linear momentum is essentially if the external force on a system is 0, the total momentum of that system is constant and if your system is just one particle and everything is external, all forces are external anyway if you call it a particle, then of course, that same principle uh, tells that if f is 0, then p is constant. So, that is about linear momentum and we will be using this conservation of linear momentum extensively when we talk of system of particles, collision of two particles and, and all those things. Okay. The other concept is related to the force itself. Okay. If you have a force which depends on a space point x, y, z, force is a function of x, y, z. So, you have f and that f is a function of uh, space point. I am using Cartesian coordinates. Uh, if convenient, we can also use depending on what problem is at hand other coordinate systems, but let us describe our theory in terms of Cartesian coordinates. So, if uh, a force depends on uh, space point, then you think of this uh, quantity. I have a point x, y, z. I have some uh, frame of reference, some origin, some axis, some y axis, some z axis and with reference to that I have a point x, y, z. Then nearby I take another point nearby and this is x plus dx, y plus dy, z plus dz and this vector I call dr vector or dl vector. Okay? Let me call it dl. People also call it dr vector, I can also take dr vector and then this is a small line segment. So, we assume that the variation of x within this is, uh, is uh, infinitesimally small, that is how calculus works. Okay? If it is infinitesimal lengths, if this displacement is infinitesimal if this dx, dy, dz are infinitesimal, then uh, I need not worry whether force at this point, this point, this point they vary, I am not worried about that, it is so small. So, whatever is the force here, I can take that as f and this is dl, you construct this quantity f dot dl. And you can take a, a curve, you can take some curve, let me take the curve somewhere here and here is a point which is we call it r 1, this vector is r 1 and another point we call this vector as r 2. So, now I am going from here to here, big distance not infinitesimal, big distance I am going from here to here. I can add all these quantities f d l here, f d l here, f d l here, f d l here, this quantity I can add take infinitesimal lengths and then construct this and add all that and that will be f dot d l. From r 1 to r 2 along that path given along the path given, 
because this dl 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 i have to take this dl then 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 this dl this dl if i take another path here from the same point r1 to r2 then uh, i'll be taking this dl then this dl then this dl then this dl then this dl and so on so it is different right it is different so f dot dl along this path may or may not be equal to f dot dl along this path okay and this plays a very important role whether this integral depends only on these two positions or it also depends on the particular path i have taken that distinguishes forces into categories one we call conservative forces other we call non conservative forces so we will start from here next time